I love the, how you mentioned it, how quickly AI is changing our work world because I'm recently, well, this month we'll be finishing a book and I talk about how anyone who's been in this space, particularly as a data professional, has known AI has existed for a long time. But a lot of times it was behind the scenes, right? Behind kind of in our internal systems, right? I even think of something as simple as like facial recognition, which uses AI and all of us use it every day, but we didn't notice it. And November 30th in 2022, when ChatGPT was released to the world, we had this ability to communicate with AI. And I think that really changed kind of the scope of AI for everyone because it wasn't the system anymore that was behind the scenes. And now we had a command line interface that allowed us to converse, which is so core and essential to who we are as human, the ability to be able to talk to one another. That's allowed us to survive in tribes for thousands and thousands of years and allowed us to be able to evolve. And so I love what you mentioned, like AI is everywhere now and taking shape and form. And I think it really comes down to the core that we now can in some ways converse with it. We found this key to unlock it, which was language. And it's opened up all these new opportunities that we didn't see before. So I started with Women in Data 10 years ago with the mission to increase diversity in data careers. Today, that is still our mission as a nonprofit organization and are making progress in multiple areas. But last year, I started to think more about what is it that's really needed in this space as AI becomes more integrated into all of our lives? And one of the things that I felt was really missing was a bridge between humans and technology. And I started to just see how fast technology was pacing and changing. And what happens sometimes is technology leaves other people behind because they don't get updated with what is how it applies to their life, but more importantly, the use cases and how it's changing their work environment. And so the Human Machine Collaboration Institute was started with the focus on being able to do research and education to create what I like to call the on-ramps for humans to more easily work with technology. And so we have a roadmap for the next zero to five years, five to 10, and 10 to 15 on those on-ramps that we are looking to provide and the research that we're hoping to do as there's still many questions left to uncover in this space. Those are great organizations both, and I do like the way that you're framing how AI has evolved from behind the scenes to now front and center. And I do wish more people would delineate between AI machine learning and generative AI. Otherwise, I think we confuse people. But for sure, that Gen AI and ChatGPT, now Gemini, has put a face to a lot of the work that you and I have been doing. Even my 91-year-old aunt (laughs) is asking me, hey, are you using this ChatGPT thing? And it's like, she's finally understood what I do with my day job. And it's been a beautiful thing. But we are leaving some people behind. So if you think about the research that you've done so far, what's maybe the biggest mistake we've been making and how do we correct that? Yeah. So while LLM in particular tools are very easy to access and start using by simply asking a question, right? Conversing and communicating with it. What I've seen a lot of organizations do is just give access to those tools and create a policy. And I think that's a decent way to get started. But there's two main problems that happen when we do that. One, we typically see the people who start to utilize those tools are like the curious, the early adopters, they're going to utilize them anyway, right? They were probably the ones who were already, you know, using a VPN and getting into these tools behind the scenes without anybody asking. But where we actually see a lot of progress in individuals using these tools are what you would call like more of the B performers at work. So these are people who are struggling a little bit more in their day job. And we see that when you train them on how to ask the right questions or as like we like to say in AI is like providing the right prompts, they can have so much more efficiency gains and creativity gains than those already high performers. And so one of the things that I think is really important is that when you release these tools to your employees for either productivity or creativity gains, that they're widely accessible, but more importantly, everyone goes through an initial training so that they have that first hands-on experience and know that this is something that they can do. Because those productivity 
equity gains are really where we see the B performers start to raise to A performers. And as any leader knows, we want everyone on our team to be those A performers. The second area that we've seen a lot of individuals maybe have to go back and make some adjustments is creating a policy before they actually know how they're going to use the tool. And so the way I like to think of this is if we're creating a city or a new road, it's going in and putting the stop signs in before we actually know where the road is going to go. We know we need stop signs. We know we need safety signs and all these different protocols, but we have to know where we're going first and how that flow of traffic is going to go before we put those in. The same can be said for or AI. And so how do we do this? Um, it's really taking a data-driven approach to where you're going to use those tools. So sticking with just the LLM tools and generative AI, one of the things that we've done is build off of the open AI research paper and MIT research paper that took job descriptions from the ONET database and mapped it to what AI's capabilities are and what it can do. And so we've done similar with other clients and particularly public service where we take all the job descriptions, we break that down into smaller tasks, and then we map that to where can AI come along and assist. That gives us then this full picture of the whole organization. What are the tasks that the whole organization does, but more importantly, different teams and department and roles? And then where will they be using AI in their day job? This allows us then to start to see where are those roads going to go and now how do we create that right policy and guidelines that are effectively guiding what's specific to our organization and how we use these tools.